So when we are adding a new library to NPM, one of the first thing we might want to check is if the name is available. So originally I wanted to call this library double dash, but typing double dash here tells me that it has been already taken. So I'm going to go with double dash. Duh. Okay. Now I can see that there is not another package called double dash. This is good. And you see that I have four packages right now. So once we're done, we're going to have five in here. Let's go to our uh, editor and I have a folder called NPM package and I'm going to add a new folder. And in that new folder, I'm just going to have the name double dashed, which is the name of our library. Now I'm going to have um, just uh, going to make sure that I'm going to be in it and I'm going for npm init y, which is going to create a package JSON for me. So run npm init flag y, and that's going to create a package JSON with some default. Now, one of the few things that I want to change in here is with TypeScript, I'm going to be uh, aiming at a dist folder. So I'm going to add it as my main here. And then uh, the types that are going to be coming from my TypeScript library are going to be inside of this. And then that's going to be index definition like file index.d.ts. Last, I want to be able to whitelist a few files. I'm just going to target anything that is going to be inside the dist folder. So it takes an array and we can just uh, target our dist folder. Okay, that's all we need for the package JSON side of things. Now let's create um, a TS config and first let's install TypeScript. Okay, so we have TypeScript in our folder and we're going to run npx tsc dash dash init, which is going to create a TS config that JSON file. And if you open it, it has all the possible defaults. So um, if you're going to be writing libraries, that's something to get used to. But for our use case right now, this is too much. Let's take it out and let's just start a fresh compiler option object. And here we want the module. Uh, let's go to common GS for our module. Um, let's just go to common GS. Okay. I don't think it matters, but then the target, we're going to go for ES 2015 and the source map, let's go to true. That's always good for debugging. And uh, the, we're going to have an output directory. So for the output directory, the, this folder that we were talking about, that's going to be right here that we're going to define it. And let's say, since we are in TypeScript, Let's make sure that we don't have no implicit any. So we want good typings for our library. And what else can we put in here? The most important part is that you have to have a declaration true if you want this to be a library. Okay, that's enough for the compiler options. Now let's go to the include. So for the include, we're going to take anything that we're going to have in our source folder basically, and target all the files that are going to be there as part of a library. And now for the exclude part, anything we don't need, such as what the node modules, anything else that you might not need, you just can put it in the exclude. Now you have your package and your TS config. We need to have some files and we're going to create a source folder. So in the source folder here, I'm just going to paste over a few files that I had so there's a subfolder called array, and then we have um, the chunk uh, functionality here, which just like group an array into chunks, um, you know, and then we have the exported name chunk here. I have added a second one for compact and compact just like removes all the falsy values. So this is going to be good enough for an example for our library. Now in the index file, we're exporting those, so they're going to be like visible. But I'm going to do one more thing. Let's create an index.ts file at the root of source. 
and here now we are just going to export the entire array folder okay so um, just export all from array so technically we have all the building blocks our library has some functionality we are ready to push it up now the one thing that we want to do is make sure that we are logged in into um, npm so make sure we are in the right space but i'm not seeing the source folder hmm yeah make sure the source folder is inside of your library <laughs> Duh. that should be obvious so let's move it inside here let's double check or triple check this time okay we have our source folder now we should be ready to publish now let's look at um, uh, converting our TypeScript into JavaScript. After doing the TSC, we have a dist folder. And then when we go in there, we see that now we have created the JavaScript version of our TS files, of our TypeScript one. So now we're ready. Okay. Let's go back and make sure we are logged in into uh, NPM by running npm login put your username of course your password and email and um, i'm using a two-factor authentication so i'm gonna check that out and this is the number that my uh, application gave me and now i'm logged in into npm okay now i can just run npm publish Let's do that, cross our finger, everything looks good. And at the end here, you see that I have a double dash 1.00. And when I refresh here, you see now I have the double dashed library that has been created at version 1.00. Now let's test this. We have it, let's consume it. Let's come back to our VS code and let's create a new folder that we're just gonna call test, okay? In test here, let's create an app.ts file. And um, let's, in order for us to get it, let's go and create a package JSON. So let's go to the terminal and run npm init y or install double dash, actually. So if we do npm install double dash, now you see that if I open the test, we do have, you know, all these things installed in there. We have our library, nice. Now let's import our library. Here, we're just gonna import from double dashed. Man, this looks so cool already. And then here, you see it's already like suggesting chunk and compact for me. This is amazing. Now, let's uh, create an array, okay, array, and let's give it like 1 to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, if I know how to count, and here, let's just log out what the chunk would be, so if we were to chunk it in groups of four, so the array, and then a group of four, okay, uh, let's double check that we have the right signature here, yes, so it takes an array and a number. And if everything goes right, we should get this output, like an array of array that will have one, two, three, four for the first array, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and uh, eight, I think, for the second one, and then finally nine and ten for the last one, since we're not gonna have another group of four. Okay, so let's run this. And I use TS node and we can just use app TS here. And then boom, this is amazing. In a matter of minutes, we have created a library, pushed it to NPM, called it into one of our projects and we are able to consume that library. This is very powerful. There's only one thing though. Anytime I push something new, you know, and let's get rid of compact. We have proved our point. But anytime I push something new, it's going to be a new version. So how can I avoid that? So anytime I push something, it's going to go to version 1, 2, and stuff like that. So let's create a new project, and I'm going to show you how to avoid that. We're going to call it double dash test, okay? And the only thing we're going to do here is going to... Uh, Test our library. So let's do an npm init y to get the package JSON. 
And uh, before doing anything else here, let's go back to our double dashed library and we're going to add a new functionality in there. So let's go back to our array folder. Let's create a new one called doubles.ts. And the only thing that this one is going to do is if you pass it an array of numbers, it's just going to give you back a new array with each number doubled. So here we pass it an array and uh, let's see if I can just write this real quick. We can use array map that takes a number and then that returns like the number uh, times two. Okay. Uh, let's make sure we have the right typing in there. It's going to take uh, a number array. And what is missing here? Yeah, yeah, we need to return this. So let's make sure we return it. Finally, let's make sure too that we export this like the other ones um, as doubles. Okay, so we have added a new functionality. Let's make sure it's part of like uh, the exportable here. So we have export doubles. Okay, that should be it. But we don't want to push it yet. Okay, how do we test this? Now let's go back to our double dash test. Uh, before we do that, let's make sure we convert it uh, to, to JavaScript. So we're going to run the TS, TS, TSC again. Make sure that it's going to be converted into JavaScript. Okay, let's not forget that part. Now let's go back to our double dash test. And here, what we want to do is we want to link those two. So we are in double dash test. And we have a package JSON. We need to have a package JSON there. And we're going to run npm link. And then we're going to target our library. So when we do that, you see that a node modules folder gets created. And we have the link there to our library. So if everything works right, we should be able to copy the same functionality that we had in AppTS in the other project. And now let's create a new file here that we call main TS. We paste it over. So we should have the same functionality in our new project. We have a main TS. Let's run TS node on it. Okay. And we should have our chunks. But now what we wanted to do is test the new functionality with doubles. So let's comment out the last line here and let's import uh, let's import first our doubles and we see it in there. And now we want to log out the array after it has been doubled by the function that is like in our library. So if everything works out, we're expecting to have the array of doubles. So from two for six to all the way to 20. All right. Let's put this into play real quick. And boom, you see it right there. So we were able to add new functionality to our library, but we did not have to push it up all the way to, um, to, to, to NPM in order to check that it worked. We should be able to add functionality and test our library in isolation without having to push all the time. When pushing up, we should be using things like semantic versioning that allows us to give a clear indication of the changes and how they affect the people that are consuming it or the projects that are consuming it. We will cover semantic versioning at length and other things such as testing and make your library maybe private or make it public for the rest of the world to consume. That's all I had for you today. Enjoy it and create responsibly.